What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 2024 Mazda CX-30, finished off in deep crystal blue mica. This one's a turbo all-wheel drive and it is $38,000. Underneath the hood of the 2024 Mazda CX-30, you're gonna find the 2.5 liter inline four-cylinder turbocharged engine. On premium gas, it has 250 horsepower with 320 pound-feet of torque. It's also paired to a six-speed automatic transmission, sends the power to all four wheels. Curb weight is around 3,500 pounds and it runs on a 12.7 gallon fuel tank. So you're also looking at 22 miles per gallon in the city with 30 out on the highway. Overall length is 173 inches with wheelbase at 104.4, width is 70.7, and height is 62.2 inches. Ground clearance is also 8 inches. Moving on to the styling with the Mazda CX-30, it's a nice looking sporty compact crossover. Got a cool set of LED headlights with a blacked out housing. I like how you can see the chrome trim going up towards them and then wrapping around the front grille. Got a lot of gloss black mesh along with your parking sensors. Mazda badge right in the center along with a forward facing camera. Large opening down below with active grille shutters to improve efficiency and airflow when needed. You also have an LED running light down below and then plastic color for the lower diffuser. Has a nice sporty design up in front. You can also see the sharp lines on the front bumper fading towards the hood and then very flat towards the center. As we make our way to the side profile, that plastic trim up front makes its way to these front fenders. You also got black along these multi-spoke wheels. They're 18 inches in diameter. Nice smooth body lines throughout the side profile and then more of that plastic material down below. We got body color door handles and then gloss black on the mirror cap with an integrated turn signal as well as camera and then chrome trim throughout the windows with some more black. Got some nice silver color for these roof rails with a good size sunroof up on top. And then for the overall side profile, once again, this is a compact crossover, very small. However, it has a pretty sporty design, especially with the sloping rear end. Got your small shark fin antenna up on top, gloss black integrated spoiler with your third brake light, sharp lines surrounding it, and then a nice set of LED taillights. Got all your badging on the right side along with the left side, and then more of that plastic material throughout this rear bumper. Got a dual exhaust, reflectors, along with some aluminum trim for the bumper itself. And overall, it's a sporty looking small car. Moving to the key fob, we get your Mazda badge. All the actual buttons are on this far left side. You have your lock button as well as unlock, of course. You can keep the key fob in your pocket and it will automatically unlock. And then this interior is the white and black. You can see the leather trim throughout it. There also is brown throughout it. You have some padding for your armrest with a good grab handle, window and mirror controls, release handle with lock and unlock. Then you can see the brown color with some chrome accents and then storage down below. Got all your power controls on the left side of the seat and then this whitish material color for the leather seating. Nice and comfortable looking with a little bit of stitching and perforations throughout the center. And then you have a sporty black leather three spoke steering wheel. And then now for the interior of the Mazda CX-30. This one does have the Premium Plus package. You can also go ahead, fire it up. With your seatbelt off, you're gonna get a very loud chime for a very long time. Taking a look at the gauge cluster, we have the speedometer right in the center. Tack over on the left, you can see miles, and then some vitals on the far right side. When cruise control's on, that'll pop up in that center screen as well. Get your Mazda badge right in the center. Controls on the left side for all the Bluetooth and audio, cruise control settings on the far right side, and then the stock on the right is for all your headlights, turn signal, and high beams on the left. Down below on the left side of the steering wheel, we have your camera view icon, safety sensors, you have a off-road mode as well. If we hit the view icon here, you can see all those cameras popping up, which is a nice touch to see. Then you can see some of that brown material going across the dashboard. Now the center screen is not touchscreen or anything, so as one drawback with it, so you gotta use this control panel down here. Not the most user-friendly screen, I'm not the biggest fan of it. You have to use the rotary dial, going into entertainment, things like that. You have communication, nav, any settings. Of course, going into reverse, your backup camera will pop up as well. Going into driving, see the front view camera, and then back into park. Underneath all that, you're gonna see all the climate controls. We have dual zone temperature, fan speed right in the center, zones, you can see these nice aluminum colored dials, hazards right in the center. 
heated seats as well as a steering wheel, and then some storage down below with wireless phone charging. You also have your two cup holders, your shifter, and then a sport mode. You can just toggle that on as well as off. Then you have the brake hold, all those controls down here with the volume, more of the brown material throughout the center. And then opening that up, you have a lot of storage in here with plugs, and it's nice how this will actually slide forwards and back. So pretty cool to have that sort of access. And then down here, we have a good size glove box with all of your air vents. One last look at the interior. Pretty nice interior, honestly. Pretty good use of materials. It's very simple and yet kind of sporty looking. Got a light colored headliner with your manual sunroof shade. And then up here, we even have a sunglass holder. You have dome light controls, garage door buttons underneath the frameless mirror, and overall a pretty nice place to be. Moving on to the rear seat space, grabbing the door and opening it up. You're gonna have a very similar door panel with the black color vinyl material, and then a little bit of padding on the armrest. You can also see we have the same materials all back here. This can seat three people. You can even pull the center seat down and you have cup holders as well as the armrest. You do have air vents down below and then storage behind the passenger seat. And then these handles right here, you're able to push and you can pull these down and they'll fold flat for more storage. All right, hopping into the back seat with the Mazda CX-30. So this is a compact crossover. I am five foot 11 sitting here and my head is almost at the ceiling and my knees are very tight against the driver's seat at my height. So this is definitely a good two person car. You know, if you kind of put your legs around the seat, it's not that bad. With the armrest and everything, it's decently comfortable. The seat back here is definitely really small. Like this is a small car for sure. If you have a family, this is probably not the crossover for you. However, two people, this could be just a good city crossover, things like that. You got enough space for items. And if you have to in a pinch, you can at least fit people back here. Moving on to the cargo space, there is a button right above the license plate. Go ahead and press that. Power operation is gonna do its thing. And with the seats all folded down, you can see just how much storage space you're able to get in this small size car. A little bit of storage on the left and right side, and then you can pull this up, and we have the Bose sub along with your spare tire. So pretty nice to see that. And then if we go in here, you can see how they're gonna fold nice and flat. And then if I lift the seat up, you can also take a look at the actual trunk space when the seats are in that position. So not too bad for being a small car for sure. And of course, you can just press that button, and automatically close it. All right, setting off now in the CX-30, stepping on it a little bit. Not too bad from the little turbo engine. It's got enough pep on its step to get up to speed quickly enough. So nice to see at least it's well powered. The six speed also pretty smooth power delivery. Gear changes are smooth as well. So I like that this has a properly powered engine and a nice transmission to where it feels pretty solid to drive. Some normal things, you know, you have a really good view out the windshield, same with the, all the mirrors. Over your right shoulder, you can tell it's a short car. I mean, the back of the car is literally like right there. Now, this is a smaller car, like we've already seen with the back seats. At five foot 11, I do feel a little tall for this car, quite honestly. I can't really get the seat in a perfect position. I feel like, you know, I don't know if I go too low, the seat just feels too flat and I can't get the base to sit more at an angle. So I don't fit the best in here. It's fine, it's all right for most people, I'm sure. However, I just wanna be more like sunken into the seat. So it's all right, if you're a little bit tall, maybe above six feet, this probably might be too small of a car for you. Now, some normal driving, this does feel very solid. I like, it's quiet in here, you don't really hear wind noise or road noise. Taking turns, you know, the steering and stability is pretty planted. I've noticed Mazdas build pretty solid feeling cars and I like the drive, it is very comfortable in here. While I can't get the seat in the best position, the materials, like the padding is actually nice. So it's got nice seat materials to it, armrests are in a great place. I mean, you definitely have some nice creature comforts to feel like you're in a nice car. It is super simple, you know, Mazdas are not the cars if you want all the tech. I mean, this is straight out of a car 10, 15 years ago. The screen, I think there might be some touchscreen setting. I've heard people comment, but I'm not really looking too far into it. So you just gotta basically not have touchscreen. So I don't like that that much. I would rather be touchscreen and sitting closer just cause it's a really far reach. So again, super simple. It does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So honestly, if you have the CarPlay up, pretty much gonna leave it on that forever. So not bad, you know, it gives you what you need, nothing more, nothing less. 
while this is a digital screen, pretty much just has your cruise control and that's about it. So again, it's very simple in here, but it does feel like a nice place to be. It feels solid, the build quality feels pretty good, brakes are adequate. Now the drive modes aren't really gonna blow your socks off, you do have the sport mode button. It hardly really changes anything, maybe throttle response is just slightly better, so nothing too crazy on that. Hitting those big bumps, again, it's a solid feeling car. I mean, it takes bumps well. Nothing's rattling, nothing feels cheap. The doors are solid when you close them. So I like how it does feel like a pretty solid little car for sub 40 grand, which in today's market, that's pretty darn affordable. I know the average price of a new car is in the 40s. So this is well below that and you get a lot of nice features. Another cool thing with the air on, there's actually vents underneath the steering column that will blow cool air on your legs, which is a really cool touch. I've noticed that in other Mazdas. So I feel like if you're looking for just a good city crossover, maybe just two people are gonna be in it. This is a good all around car. You got enough storage for items in the back. And if you need to fit a friend or two in the back, you could do that. So it seems like it gives you quite a lot for the money in a small package. So my perspective, honest thoughts, giving it some gas again. It is nice that a small car like this is peppy. There are other cars that are about 40 grand that might have a three cylinder engine and a CVT. So I really do like the fact that Mazda has a true engine in it, a decent sized four cylinder. It's not even a small four cylinder. Two and a half liter is a pretty good size, especially for a four cylinder engine. And with that turbocharger and the six speed, it's really solid with the power plant and that ride quality is pretty solid as well. So I really like to see that. I think Mazda is giving you something a little bit different than the competition. While the tech in here is nothing fancy, nothing new, I think where Mazda's making up for it is the pricing and just the solid feeling. I mean, we're right up to 50 without stressing anything. That says a lot. When you look at small compact crossovers, most of the time they are honestly severely underpowered with a very wimpy engine. This isn't that. This has something solid underneath the hood. Now, like I said, my only true complaints I would say is the seating position. I just feel like I'm too tall. I, I don't know, I can't sink the seat the way I want to. So again, if you're over six feet, I probably would not go for this. There's bigger vehicles, of course, you can get. But I'd say for the typical person just looking for an affordable, nice to drive vehicle that's roomy enough, this is something that's quite pleasant. Being on the highway, it's quiet and comfortable. Suspension absorbs bumps very well. And it's just easy and simple to drive. I know with modern cars with so many screens, so many touch screens, so many fancy little kind of gimmicky things that make them look futuristic and fancy, Mazda doesn't seem to care about that. They're just giving you simplicity and just an overall nice place to be at a good price. So I can see the appeal to this car and judging by the comments of all the Mazdas we have filmed, owners really like how simple it is. While this climate control looks no different in the last 10 years in cars, not everybody wants to have it all on the screen or just have one button that does a million different controls. Some people like just basic climate controls. So I can see that for sure. So I think at the end of the day, if you just want a simple, nice to drive car, Mazda's definitely got some different vehicles for you. Obviously this one's on the smaller side, so not exactly a family car or anything like that. But if you go up their spectrum with bigger crossovers, obviously you can get there. So not a bad little car for sure. It looks cool inside and out. The materials are actually pretty good as well. While we do have some real leather, I think these seats are actually real leather. Uh, steering wheel is, got some vinyls on it, but they all feel solid and feel like a nice uh, touch. The buttons on the steering wheel all feel pretty nice as well. So nothing about it really feels cheap or anything. It just feels like a nice normal car with a solid feeling. But that is my thoughts on the 2024 Mazda CX-30. This one's about fully loaded with all the options, highest trim level, options, drivetrain, all that good stuff, and not too bad in pricing, I would say. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned for plenty more content, and I'll see you all in the next video.